Let's start with the big name when it comes to AI and chips, NVIDIA. Uh, most estimates show them having about 80% of that AI chip market, maybe even more. Going into 2024, does that dominance change in any way? Are there any rising competitors that investors should know about? So, Frank, I, I think there's some other companies with, with interesting technology, but to put things in perspective, um, NVIDIA is doing 14, or it, we think they're going to do about 14 billion um, in data center GPU revenue in, in Q4. Um, when I look at AMD, it, it's meaningful for AMD if they do north of 2 billion next year, which is what they've got it for. Um, I, I think estimates on the street are actually closer to 3 to 4 billion. Uh, but still, look at that. They're the second most competitor NVIDIA is doing, looking at doing $14 billion this quarter. All right. So it sounds like you're saying they have a pretty wide moat as of now um, that's going to extend at least in the near term. It, 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 exactly. It's, they're just so much bigger that it's, right. it's difficult to see anyone where, again, for AMD, that, that amount of revenue is certainly meaningful. Um, it, it's just hard to see anyone getting to the volume that it, that it matters for, for NVIDIA in the near term. All right. Um, I want to talk to you about some news yesterday. Amazon out with an AI chatbot for businesses. As we see more companies expand their artificial intelligence offerings, what does that mean for the chip sector? And does that does that create other companies that are going to rival with NVIDIA? The fact that there's more and more demand for these AI products. I, I mean, I, I think that you need uh, those applications to show up. So what we've been seeing so far is companies using a uh, significant number of chips to train models. Um, the, those models are nice, but they, they don't drive revenue. So when you get applications like what Amazon came out with, uh, that drives inference, um, which are those inference applications, those are what would drive revenue, would uh, make it worthwhile to invest more. And, and yes, when you, when you look at those use cases, um, those use cases are different. Um, they require slightly different technology. And so it does create an opportunity for a company like, say, Brock, a startup uh, to gain share where okay. their their technology is really well suited to large language model inference. Yeah, I, I do want to talk to you about that. So first, I want to circle back again. You're saying NVIDIA is far and away the leader. Your, uh, your price target on NVIDIA is 600, trades at about 481 right now. Um, give us those other under the radar plays, maybe some private companies or startups and also other public companies that investors may be overlooking, but could play a meaningful part in this AI story. Yeah, certainly. So I, I think you can group it into three categories. So you've got the other public companies out there. I think AMD, um, they've gotten traction in supercomputing. Um, they're second to NVIDIA in revenue. Um, the, they're the one to watch on the pub, public company side. It, Intel's a little bit smaller. Um, on the private company side, the two that stand out to me are uh, Cerebrus. So really high-end training. Uh, but they've they've gotten some big wins, uh, particularly a company called G42, um, and then Grok. Um, they, they, their technology seems just seems to fit really well with inference. They've just started ramping uh, in terms of selling units, um, and then the, the last piece, and I think probably the, the piece that um, is furthest along is the products that the hyperscalers themselves or the CSPs are making. Um, so you've got okay. uh, Amazon talking about Inferentia and Tranium. Um, you've got um, Google with their TPUs, um, and you've got a couple suppliers into that market. So Broadcom is the biggest. Um, they supply into, I, I believe, uh, both Google and uh, Meta. Okay. And, and then you, I believe you have Marvell helping Microsoft. 